So you were uh, overjoyed with how practice went today? I guess. No, I didn't like the way we came out ready to play. I mean, we got to learn to come out and play every day. And what I don't like about what we did today is we got to be detail oriented. We can't go out and slop around through practice and expect to play in the game. You know, my philosophy is you're going to practice like you play. And I didn't like the way it went today. Overall, like last week, how do you like how things have gone? You know, pretty good. I, I, I'm excited to be in a position. You know, the football part of it's been easy for me. 37 years in football, and uh, that part of it is easy. It's kind of the administrative stuff that I wasn't prepared for, like putting together a different practice plan, uh, depth charts, uh, dealing with the offense. You know, I haven't done that for a long time, and that's kind of the getting used to it. But I'm kind of in my routine now. I'm a routine guy. And I park in the same parking spot every morning. So, you know, I go to the same grocery store. So, you know, I'm starting to get into my routine. I'm feeling more comfortable with it. And uh, it's just a matter of getting it the way I want it right now. How is this different from 96 when you took over down there? Well, it's a different circumstance. You know, 96, my, Pokey Allen was one of my best friends. And he was dying of cancer, uh, was not prepared for it. They came in two or three days in the uh, doubles in camp and said, hey, we're making you the interim head coach. You know, more of my mindset then was let's get uh, this thing, keep it together until Pokey can come back. And then uh, it's a little different situation here. Now it's, hey, you got to keep this thing right for uh, 12 weeks and try to get it as good as I can get it. You know, and if I put my stamp on it, we're there. I was just trying to maintain the program. You got the Aggies this weekend. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I talk about that. I mean, it's a quick process for you to get these guys done. Yeah, it is. And, uh, you know, I look at it as a challenge. You know, I don't know if we're good enough to go down there or for them to come in here and us to beat them. But uh, what I want to see is I want to see improvement out of this ball club. You know, we can't get any lower than we were coming out of that North Texas game. And uh, let's just get better. And I want to see us improve. I want to see us compete. I want to see the football team that I think we can become start to emerge. And uh, that's what I'm looking for this weekend. Let's just get better. What have you talked about with the players as far as the transition to you taking over as head coach? Well, I just told them we got to continue to grow. Uh, I changed some things where we practiced, uh, put my stamp on some of that. Uh, it's not going to be one of those quick fixes. It didn't get this way. We're going to, it's going to take some time. You know, what I told them, we got a lot left to play for. We got a conference championship left to play for. We got a bowl game still out there. And this team's capable of doing it if we can get together. We're young. We don't know how to practice yet, obviously. Uh, we can get better every week. By the time we get in a conference, we may be a decent football team. The biggest difference that, that you're doing, the difference you're talking about, the difference in the people? Well, the biggest thing is up-tempo practices. I want to have short, crisp practices. Uh, right now, I don't think we're a very fundamental sound football team. I want a fundamentally sound football team that can run and hit. Uh, you know, I pride myself on uh, high energy defense, blitz, let's get after it. That's the kind of style I want. And I think a team will adapt to a head coach's style once they understand what it is. And we're not even close to where we need to be right now. Music throughout practice, is that just to simulate game noise or to try to distract them a little bit? I think it's to drive me crazy, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> but no, what it is, the kids wanted it, you know, and I think your, your player is going to tell you what they want, and you got to give the players some ownership of the team, and they wanted that. Um, you know, it's killing my boys, but uh, I don't know. Shoot, that's what they wanted to do, so we're going to give it a try, and so far it's okay. You know, so, so that's not my head hurts, list, but nah, listening. that's not quite my deal. No, I didn't hear any country this morning. We got to get that changed. <laughs> Anything else, guys? Is it weird to spend time focusing on the offense, at least part of the time? Yeah, it is. Yeah, I mean, this is, I got to take what the run and shoot is and try to try to get it into something that works for me. You know, that's really not my personality, you know, uh, but we're not going to full sale transition right now. We just got to make some changes and uh, try to get it as best we got with the personality. You know what I told the offense coaches? There's no uh, magic to it. Let's get the ball in the hands of the playmakers as best we can. Let's get the offensive line blocking. Let's let's get better. And uh, you know, it is what it is right now until I can get it the way I want it. And you're not going to do it at this point of the year. We got to stay with what we we did all through camp. Very little time. Too. Very little time. Yeah. Yeah, you're not going to go in and put in the wishbone right now, I guarantee you that. So, you know, just a few tweaks here or there. We're going to try to run the ball a little more and, uh, you know, kind of massage it as we go and, and get it in the hands of our playmakers.
when the press release came out, you have co-offensive coordinators now with Coach Morrison and Coach Phillips. How do you divide their responsibilities? You know, that's kind of their problem, the way I look at it. You know, they <laughs> both want to be offensive coordinators. I told them to work it out. Uh, Dan obviously is going to call a plays. He's an experienced uh, coach. And, uh, you know, Jason's a great football coach. They'll get it figured out. And uh, Dan's going to call the plays game day. Jason's going up in the box. Uh, so Dan will put his flavor on it. And uh, I think it's going to work out well. I really do. Talk to June later. What's that? Talk to June later. Yeah, I talked to June probably four or five times since it all happened. And, uh, you know, he's been good about giving me sound, solid advice with what he thought. And, uh, yeah, I value his opinion. He added Coach Davis to help with the offensive line. What does he bring to the staff? Yeah, you know, I think he brings a lot of energy and a lot of experience. You look at his resume, 30 years of coaching online, and you got to be nuts to do that online. So, you know, I just like his enthusiasm. I like his expertise. Uh, he's been around a lot. Uh, I just felt like that was an area where we could use more help right now. Not that Coach Juan hasn't done a good job. It's more that we need more help in that area. So, uh, you know, Tim was – I was amazed that he was available. So you when I knew he was available, to coach go. the offensive line that long than coaching defense as well? Oh, no question. Yeah, <laughs> no question. No, really. It's, uh, you know, it's, you got to have a guy that knows what he's doing there. That's the start of the whole thing on offense. If your offensive line ain't any good, you ain't going to be any good on offense. So that's just the way it is. Can you comment on Kenny Hill? Yeah. <laughs> Been watching him for two weeks now. No, I think he's really growing up as a quarterback. Uh, he sees the field well. He's got a lot, a lot of arm. The thing I think he does well is he anticipates the routes and the breaks and the balls out before those receivers ever get out of route. He's got good receivers around him. Those, that's as good a receiver core there probably is in the country.